Now, things went south on the investment of that Ford Lightning. I can't floor it. It doesn't work. It blew the fuse as soon as we started it. It's nerve wracking mine. I'm looking for a Ford Lightning, dude. I need a generation two Ford Lightning with no mods, low miles. I'm looking for a unicorn. I'm trying to find a nice price too. Oh, 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 oh. I think I found one, bud. I'm a look and I'm a like it. Only 22,000 miles, 2004, minimal mods. Okay, it's in Arizona. How far is Arizona? Eight hours? Okay, be a fun drive. Take the little man out of school, go get it. Let's give this fella a call. Yeah, I was just calling in regards to, I saw online, you have a 2004 Ford Lightning. You have the silver one. Yeah, I'd love to come by and see it. That could work. And in regards to the mods, there's not too many mods on it, and it, it, it runs good. It's pristine, huh? Yeah, and I'll send an inspector out before I head down, but yeah, sounds good. What's up, dog? I think we got one, baby! We'll see. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're cool. The plan is I'd love if uh, one of your inspectors could go uh, to the dealership and just give it a once over for me. Yeah, it's right out, right outside Phoenix. I looked up, it's like 10 minutes outside uh, Phoenix. That works perfect for me. Perfect, look forward to the call. But one hour, one hour. They have someone right outside there. They say he's like 20 minutes away. So they go get their peepers on it. Now you gotta hope the guy knows what he's looking for. You gotta hope. He understands this type of car because they might just specialize in that's i didn't ask that's why i messed up you gotta figure if they're inspectors they know they're sending a guy who knows these type of cars because if they're just used to like looking at like jeep wranglers he probably won't know what to look for with mods so let's hope this thing's as good as they say it is the guy's exact words on the phone was this thing's show quality this thing show quality it's, it's spotless so we'll see it's also the guy wants my money and you're buying a car off the internet without looking at it. See how it goes. Taco Bell's underrated, dude. Two chicken quesadillas, a large diet Pepsi. Um, oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Shut your mouth. Shut up. Shut, 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 shut. This is it. Should I put on speaker? No. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he said on the phone. No, I'm looking at it right now. I'll fly out there and I will drive it back to LA. Okay, thank you. Excited. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Boom! What's up? He said it's absolutely spotless. So I will book my flight right now. I will pull my kiddo out of school and we will fly to Phoenix, Arizona and go pick up this 2004 Ford Lightning. One might ask, why do I want a Ford Lightning? Well, there's an element of nostalgia for me. When I was in high school, these things were the bee's knees. You didn't have to be a gearhead to know these things were freaking cool. The Ford Special Vehicle Team, also known as SVT, was conceived in 1991. Their mission was to create vehicles that stop as well as they accelerate, ride as well as they handle, and most importantly, went fast, really fast. It's also important to mention that if the SVT team didn't develop the Ford Lightning, you wouldn't have your beloved Ford Raptor. They debuted the Mustang Cobra in the first generation Ford Lightning in 1993. At a Chicago auto show, it blew people away. The first generation Lightning had 240 horsepower, went zero to 60 in just seven seconds. I know what you're thinking. Seven seconds, that ain't fast. You gotta remember kids, this is the early 90s. Also, you could only get in two colors, red or black, pretty badass. They launched the second generation Lightning in 1999. It went zero to 60 in 5.8 seconds. Still thinking that's not fast? This was the fastest production truck ever made. So watch your mouth. To take it to another level, the Ford Lightning was showcased in the blockbuster hit Fast and Furious. Ever heard of it? Rest in peace, Paul Walker. By today's standards, it's not the fastest truck on the road by any means. But with some simple mods, these bad boys can move. And that's what I'm going to do. What's up, fam? Your boy is out here in Phoenix, Arizona. I flew out here this morning because I found the gem of all cars. The 16-year-old in me is freaking out right now. If you had this car 
when I was in high school, you were basically Leonardo DiCaprio or you're Paul Walker. I flew all the way out to Phoenix, Arizona to pick up a gem, a cherry of a Generation 2 2004 Ford Lightning. Check this bad boy out. Not a mark on it. Generation 2 2004, the tonneau cover. He did the delete in the back. Filthy, filthy, not crazy about the Euro lights, whatever. Tires are good. That's sick. They see all, all stock, Billy Grill. You put an aftermarket intake on it. The pulley, Diablo Sport pulley for low extra horsepower. But we got plans for this. So I don't care about any of that. I care about the low mileage. There's no wear and tear on the ride. Yeah, so this comes with 380 horsepower, 450 pounds of torque. And the interior is what drives me absolutely bonkers. Check it out. So these are from Ford and uh, you can take those off and this interior has never touched a human's booty. Some carbon fiber on it, but other than that, stock. So now I gotta drive back to LA in this bad boy. It's taking about five, six hours and change. Got my co-pilot here, say what up, T? What's up, my peeps? <laughs> my peeps? Okay, dude. All right, see you guys on the other side. LA bound. Now, things went south on the investment of that Ford Lightning. Oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. The one so, I was in? Yes. Oh, so boy. when you buy a car online, yeah. it doesn't tell you all the problems. And then you get on the highway and you floor it and it goes, nah, good. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just doesn't work like it's supposed to. And then you dyno it in front of the most manly mechanics. You know, these guys, they have their, they have their Raptor R's. They got these thousand, you know, horsepower diesel. In, they, they're guys. I'm like, they're guys, guys. Just lightning up there. Like yeah. compared yeah. to their trucks, I'm, I'm the bottom here. Yeah. And so they, they dyno theirs, you know, one's 700 horsepower at the wheels another's 600, the other's 540. I'm like, Oh, this is cool. We get my truck up there. And they're like, okay. They don't let me put it on there because I look gay and I have skinny jeans on. So they drove my truck up there, hurt my feelings. Oh boy! So they get the truck on the thing. You you know what dynoed out the first time it went again? These numbers five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred. Oh no! Oh no! One hundred twenty-five. <laughs> oh, there's something wrong with your dyno. And the guy goes, "No, no, nope, but your transmission." <laughs> I go, "What do you mean? I just bought it." He goes, "Yeah, but it's twenty years old, bud." It's your transmission. He goes, floor it again. It's not, it's just not, there's something wrong with the transmission. Oh, no. What's in the shop? It is 8 a.m. We're headed to Diction Motorsport because I got right here from LMR the parts. I got the, the spark plugs, the fuel pump, the filter. And according to Eddie at Addiction Motorsports, that's all we need to get this bad boy up and running so it doesn't run like a freaking Prius. So we're finally headed to Addiction Motorsports to get this bad boy just running. And hopefully it, it's all good and then we can start the, the tune fest. See, I can't floor it. I gotta gradually go up like a freaking, you can't floor it. It's a bummer, you buy a, a freaking Ford Lightning and you wanna rip the streets. See, get on the highway, it's a gradual gain because if I go too much, something and there's no boost that's the other thing this thing has an even supercharger on it it doesn't work so the check engine light that's cool Something is unplugged. Again? Uh, you know, it's like, not, it's not wanting to start after we put the fuel pump in there. 
but the ECU was adding 25% fuel in the long terms. So more than likely I'll have to clear the, um, the keep alive memory and have all the long term reset back to zero. And then I'll just check to see why it's misfiring after the install. So, but I'm gonna check fuel pressure because if fuel pressure is back to 34 where it's supposed to be at instead of 20, obviously it's got more fuel pressure and now it doesn't need all that fuel that the ECU was putting in under the long terms from when it was running out of fuel, so. If it has no fuel pressure, it ain't gonna run. It blew the fuse as soon as we started it. So since the bigger pumps draw more amperage, it blew the fuse. It has a factory 20 amp fuse. So we put a 30 amp fuse in there, you know, and then it didn't blow it. Because the bigger pumps, since they're 340 liter per hour, now instead of the factory, 195 or something like that i believe they are um they draw more amperage so as soon as we started it it blew the fuse you know and we're like then we're like trying to figure out why it won't even start so uh, you know keep it simple check the with the test light check the fuel pump fuse and it was blown put a 30 amp in it, it's fine now so simple um fuel pressure is good so now we'll just uh put it on the dyno and see what we do Yeah, 376 and 450 torque, 10 and a half pounds of boost. That's kind of what it should be at, right, Eddie? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, like, if it made like 14 pounds with another pulley, it would probably make right around 400 wheel. So this only this only has the upper pulley, 10 and a half pounds. So 370. I mean, these things make 380 to the crank stock. Yeah. They make like 320 to 330 wheel stock. Yeah. Uh -huh. So cold air kit and pulley, it's up 40, 50. Yeah. interesting to drive it now it's been so brutal i'm so excited Aha! it works baby and he fixed it now it's off to the races see you on the other side yeah!